Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to another video. And today we're gonna to be doing another leak code problem. And the problem is gonna be revolving around binary search trees, which I don't believe we've done on this channel yet. So this should make for an interesting problem. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so this problem is called validate binary search tree and it is a leak code medium. And the question is given a binary tree, determine if it is a valid binary search tree. Assume a BST is defined as follows. The left subtree of a node contains only nodes with keys less than the node's key. The right subtree of a node contains only nodes with keys greater than the node's key. Both the left and right subtrees must also be binary search trees. Okay, and if we go ahead and look at these examples here, the first one is valid because it's pretty simple here. Um, one is less than two, three is greater than two. Uh, this one down here, which you guys can't see, this one is, this one here is going to be outputting false, um, and that's because we see that we have a four here that's less than five, but it's on the right side. Um, also, the three here is less than five, but again, it's on the right, it's on its right subtree, which breaks the constraint. So before writing the code, let's go ahead and diagram this out and see how we can solve it. All right, here's an example of a binary tree that we want to validate. So what we could do is we could try looking at the root node and checking if the left side is smaller and that the right side is greater than the root. So we see that five is less than 10, 15 is greater than 10. And then we can try it again on the children. We see that one is less than five and 12 is greater than five. However, we see that this 12 down here is greater than 10, which breaks our constraint that everything on the right side of 10 has to be smaller. So this algorithm won't work. So the way that we could solve this is we can keep track of the minimum and maximum values that we've seen so far as we're going down the tree. For example, if we go down the left side, we know that the greatest value that we've seen so far is 10. So we know that everything here has to be less than 10. Likewise, we haven't seen a, we don't need a minimum yet and we don't have one. so we'll just put a negative infinity here for now. Then we go to the left side here. We see that the everything on the left side has to be less than a five and it has to be greater than a negative infinity. And we do a check here. Since we're at a leaf node, um, we can now do a check and see that one is in fact between these numbers. And we can do something like return uh, true. Now, if we go to the right subtree of five, we know that it has to be, everything has to be less than a 10 and everything has to be greater than a five. We see that 12 is not in between five and 10. So we return a false. Now, once we're done with that, we can check here and check that both of these subtrees return a true. Here they run, returns a true. However, this returns a false. So what we do here is return a false for this entire subtree right here. Likewise, we go to the right side now and we see that everything on the right side has to be greater than a 10 and everything so far has to be less than infinity. We see that 15 is in fact between these two numbers. So what we do is we return a true. Now we do a check here and check that both sides return true. They don't, right? Because this is a false. So what this whole tree returns is going to be false. So what are the time and space complexities of this algorithm? Well, for the time complexity, we know that we have to do this algorithm on every single node. So the time complexity is gonna be big O of N. For the space complexity, since we're gonna do this in a recursive fashion, the call stack will only get as big as the depth of the tree. So the space complexity is going to be big O of the depth. All right, so now that we have a general algorithm, let's go ahead and see what the code looks like. All right, so the code for this is actually gonna be pretty straightforward. So in this is valid BST method, we know that we're gonna be doing some kind of recursion here. So let's just call that helper for now. And we don't know what the arguments are yet, so let's do that blank for now. And this is what it's actually gonna be returning. So if we wanna go ahead and implement helper, So let's see, so we know that we're gonna be passing in our root node here. And what we also wanna do is we wanna pass in 
two values, right? The minimum and the maximum that that root can be at that time. So the first thing we want to do is have our base case. So if our root is equal to null, then we're simply just going to return the true. Next, we need to do our check to make sure that our, our root is in between min and max. And if it's not, then we need to return a false. So if it's less than or equal to, because remember, everything here has to be less than the node. So if they're equal, then that uh, breaks our constraint. So we need to check for that as well. We do the same thing for the max. And if either of those cases are true, then we're simply going to return a false. Otherwise, we recurse on the left and right subtrees. So we can do this all in one line here. So what we're going to do is we're going to return and we're going to call helper twice, one for the left and one for the right. On this call, we're going to go to the left. So our min value is going to stay the same. However, our max is going to be whatever the value of the root is. We also need to do this for the right side. So for the right side, we need to update our min. So our min is going to be our root.val and our max is going to stay the same. Now, if we go up to our is valid BST, we need to pass in our arguments here. So this is simply going to be root. Um, we don't have negative infinity and positive infinity here, but what we can do is we can say integer dot min value and integer dot max value. So lead code is going to give us an edge case here where the value of the root is actually going to be equal to the max value. So what we need to do here uh, is we need to just do a, like a quick fix here and we can just turn these into longs here. All right, if we want to go ahead and run that and see if everything compiles, we see that it does. So if we go ahead and submit it, we see that we should get a success here and we do. So our runtime is 100%. And our memory usage is also 100%. So it's an optimal solution here. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Um, for binary search trees, as you can see, the hard part really is diagramming it out. Um, a lot of times you are going to have a recursive solution. That's why the code is actually going to be pretty simple, um, even though it might be a complex problem. Also, when you have everything diagrammed out, it's a lot easier to see the time and space complexity. So I highly recommend you do that. All right, and uh, yeah, that's gonna be all for this video. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something. Um, please hit that like button, subscribe, and thank you guys so much for watching and hope you guys have a great day.